we are going on a trip in our favorite piece of going through the sky, stories untold. That made more sense in my head if I'm honest. But anyway, good morning. This is Calamity Calling and I am in a very good mood because I just finished playing Later Alligator and it gave me everything I needed. So, I feel like I'm in a good enough headspace to potentially struggle with the last session of Stories Untold. So that's what we're gonna do. I've been playing more and more on TikTok because, you know, I said I wouldn't take it seriously and then I take it way too seriously and I started trying to make videos for it. I'm not very good, but I'm learning and I'm trying and that's what's important. So let's do this! I think that's enough of that for now. Oh, thanks for not making me watch that again. Hello! Seems you've become self-aware. You're quite fond of this show, aren't you? Oh no, I need to make the volume go up. I'm just in here. Am I an inpatient? To be okay. fair, that's the scene Coming I had in mind for, room. like, the first game. Just relax. Right, Mr. Asian, now are you ready? No. Just hit record on the tape deck in front of you when you're ready. This is subject 12198623, new session entry. That's we a lot myself, of numbers. Dr. Alexander leading. And you again. We have our patient, Mr. James Asian. As we know, James has recently recovered from a two-week coma following his accident. In our last three sessions, James's attempts to recollect events of the accident have seen him merging his memory with his imagination. These episodes have always ended in panic, and we've had to terminate the session abruptly. Let's try and do this one better, James. So when you're ready, let's bring this back. I know how difficult this must be, but you can do this. James, it's time to remember. No! Can't make me! Your mind. It's like a conscious black box. It can show you your memories. Look into it. No. No, thank you. Ugh, last time I zoomed in on the boob cameras, I got. Yeah, that happened. Oh, I'm back here again. I was hoping I wouldn't be. Episode, you recalled a false memory of a remote weather station. You were Where the tentacles at? The world, locked inside your coma. We interacted with you daily, encouraging you to wake. Your family would do number puzzles with you. Anything really to bring you back. People needed answers, James. Do you remember? I have another signal here for you, James. It's at 5610FM. You can't miss it. 5610FM. FM. We're going on a trip in our favourite piece of going through the stars. Like, I remember actually- I, I need to stop using the word like. I have a perfectly good vocabulary. But I remember actually watching that when I was young. Like, little iron star- Ah! No! Six. Okay, now I turn you off so I can hear it. Playing with the fan so that I don't- Right, okay. So, 20F was the name of the group from last time, wasn't it? 12, 19, 86, 23, 04, enter. Report. Okay, let's go back to the book. 
I was hoping it wouldn't be this one again, in all honesty. This was my least favourite of all the things. Report. Okay. Wait, I don't remember medical records being a part of it before. Focus, please. Fatal accident. Arrived on scene to discover two cars that had been involved in a near head on collision. Lying down, vehicle with head injuries. An ambulance was called. Smell of whiskey from driver and empty whiskey bottle on passenger seat. So I messed up. I was driving under the influence. Right. 20F fatal accident. James action. Let's try it. The report. Line one is, I've got it written down. 20F fatal accident. 20F hyphen fatal accident. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's spelled wrong. I know that. Empty whiskey. Oh. Ah, why isn't it working, Cap Talk? Empty whiskey. Enter. And then the last line. Out of control. Please make this. Find the signal, James. Listen to the voices. You have to face it, James. Finally. Never in my life has anyone told me to listen to the voices. Normally, it's ignore them. FM 7000. Okay. Let's bring you down to an exact number and then all the way back up. I didn't need to bring back the hundreds, I've realised in hindsight. Not like at all. I've worked with Officer Henning for six years and not once have we even talked about alcohol. Drunk driving. He was a father, a husband, he was fine. No way he caused this. It's him, this Haitian guy. He's got something to hide. I do not like this thing. Like right now, picture me as that little cartoon lizard. Um. I can't remember precisely where I saw it, but it like looks at a lipstick and it's like, I do not like the thing. I Not at all. This is my I do not like the thing. This looks, ooh. I put my drink down and the computer moved. Okay. Look up. Do we need to grab the briefcase? This doesn't make sense to you. It's cool. Well, it does have a roof, that's good. You step out into the ward, only it seems abandoned. Your vision is blurry. Nope. Hang on. Got to explore for a bit first. Hmm. Please don't jump scare me. I have to go out later in the dark. We are going on a trip in our favourite rocket ship, zooming through the sky. I don't want to die. 
Let's go back into my lovely safe room. All of your episodes were recorded on the tape. This is the fourth. Not giving me a choice, are you? Why was I in the storeroom? I'm aboard. I thought I was really brave for going in that room, but it turns out it doesn't really matter anyway. You spent most of your waking moments here. The only video you have, some horror compilation. Trash. Please don't make me... Hmm. Uh. Why is it getting blurrier? Oh, we're going on our trip in our favorite piece of crap zooming through the scars this isn't how I die I've climbed a board I don't want to explore I want to go home it's dark and sounds weird I try to get into here? Ooh, bright lights. We like bright lights. You grab the keys from the table. They weigh heavy in your hand. Ah. Stairwell or exit. I'm out. Peace out, brothers. Nope, not that way. Oh, this will not end well for me. The waiting area is dark, but you feel a presence right behind you. Someone breathes on your neck, standing over you. You feel dread in the pit of your stomach. Oh shit, that's bright. Okay, we have a 22 year old male just brought in from a vehicle collision. He was awake and mobile at the scene, but collapsed on arrival to the emergency ward. The other passengers died in the accident. I'm getting no pulse. Prepare for defib. Pull <laughs> to 10 and give me 100 joules. Hi. Charging up full to 10. Um, turn the camera on, turn the TV on. Ugh! Why is it showing me someone's eye? Um, no wait, that's not x-ray. Have I really forgotten so much? Hello person's eye. That's my eye. This is... Um... Ah! I see! Charging up to... Oh. Ten. Oh, it doesn't go lower than twenty. What about on this wave? Does it go lower? 100 joules, charging up full to 10. Oh, sorry, 100. I thought you said 10. What is going on? I feel like I'm performing my own circumcision or something. 100 joules, and then this go. Joules, charging up full to ten. 
Oh, sorry, I'm an idiot. Oh, I just had to turn it off and do it again. That's frustrating. Ouch. No reaction from first stage. Let's try higher. Two hundred joules. Keep the amp charge at ten. Ooh, this is gonna sting. Two hundred joules. I'm charge getting there. Let's go. Don't be mean. Seven, ninety-eight, ninety. Ah, no. Down one. There we go. And. Clear. <laughs> Okay, we have a reaction of some sort here, a weak signal. Let's keep going. Increase again. 360, charge full. That's quite a big jump, I gotta say. Come on, 360, hurry. Did you know that a defibrillator isn't actually to bring you back to life, it's to shock your heart rate back into a normal rhythm? Clear. Well, Ooh. Did you look at that? Seems we have a pulse. Rhythm is stable. We need to run an x-ray right away. Where are we with that x-ray? Let's get it going now, please. I don't remember how to... There we go. Apparently I did remember how to do an x-ray. Isn't that wonderful? Like, um, Cerebral hemorrhage. We need to drain this now to relieve pressure. Prepare for trepanation. Switch on the drill, please. Oh, it's gonna do the dentist noise. The drill, please. Oh, oh, that that's that's like solid level twenty. Unpleasant. Oh. No, mm mm, mm mm. We're going to attempt to alleviate some of this discomfort. Oh, by. I know the brain doesn't have, like, pain sensors, but the skull, unlike the stuff around your skull, does. Ugh! <laughs> oh, all the goosebumps. Oh, 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 I have those fingers running up and down and up and down the spine. It's very unpleasant. Am I like re jumping back? Not only is tonight New Year's Eve, but tomorrow you leave on a six month trip abroad with friends. Mum, Dad, and your sister Jennifer have decided to throw a party to celebrate it all. The house is full. You're in the living room, and as usual, you don't recognize a soul. Look around. Oops, selling capitals. The room is full of chatty strangers, mostly friends of mum and dad. There's a door to the hall. Walk to hall. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, use door. Leave room. You push through the crowd into the hallway. The hallway is as welcoming as ever, only this time the folks have put a great big banner up across the main hall. A half-finished drinks are abandoned on almost every horizontal surface. <laughs> surface. Stairs lead up, although the party is firmly downstairs. Go upstairs. As much as you'd love to, you promised you'd stay downstairs with the party. Ugh! Don't want to. Same as ever, stairs, door to the living room, and door to the kitchen. Go to kitchen. They say all the best parties are in the kitchen. Yeah, because that's where the food is. The kitchen is full of people and loud. There are drinks and food on the table and the party is in full swing. Dad has cooked a hog roast, which is proudly on the table, although no one is eating it. Eat hog roast. Because that sounds very tasty right now. Maybe later. Um, look around. There is a utility room and writing on the wall. Also, Jen is here signalling to you. Read writing. Happy New Year 1986 on another banner. Weird place to hang it. Uh, 
go to Jennifer. You push through, apologising over and over. You get to Jennifer. You hug. You're going to miss each other. You thank her for the party. She asks you if you're enjoying the party. Say yes. You tell her it's great, even though you don't really know anyone. She tells you to enjoy it anyway and to loosen up. She asks you to get her a drink. Uh, look around. Jen is patiently waiting for a drink. Go get drink. You pour Jen a drink, and one for yourself too. There's never an awkward silence with Jennifer. She always has a question. She asks if you have everything sorted for your big trip. Say yes. You tell her yes, that you have packed everything with plenty of room to spare. Another hug. Your family have really gone out of their way to make this trip happen for you. It might be what you need to get some perspective and maybe not mess up so much. She's going to miss you. You're going to miss her. She walks away. Jen has disappeared into the crowd. You're left standing, nodding and smiling at the approving faces. There is so much to do for this move. Can't mess it up, but first a drink. Drink. You pour and down another drink. Anything to move the night along. Look around. I don't want you to get absolutely trash faced. The room is full. There is a utility room right on the wall. Go to utility room. You open the door and peer in. You're never allowed in here normally. This is where Dad keeps his fine wines and whiskies. Uh oh! I see where this is going. Ceiling to floor racks, a collector. Though he does actually drink them too. There is a bottle with a ribbon around it and a card. Look at bottle. Sorry, I don't know what you're looking at. Um. Sometimes you do things. Sometimes those things are wrong. Keep going, you have to read what they said. Give up. Look at card. You pick up the whiskey and the card. It's your dad's handwriting. Son, we're so proud of you and everything you've achieved. You've earned this. It's a bottle of 25-year-old double malt. You shouldn't really, but you have to try it. With your whiskey in hand, you take the room around you. There must be hundreds, no thousands of pounds worth of drink in here. You really must thank your dad for the whiskey. Find dad. Um, leave room. You head back into the kitchen, clutching your new best friend. You stumble out of the utility room, back into the kitchen. That's one strong whiskey. You take another swig. And give the thumbs up to dad across the room. He nods and winks. Um, look around. Busy and noisy. We'll need to find somewhere quieter. Leave room. You go back out to the hallway. A few bumps and laughs on the way through and you make it to the hall. You stop dead in your tracks. It's Jen, covered in blood. Look around. Maybe she just has a red drink. She's staring straight at you. No one else notices. Go to Jen. Blood is dripping down her face. It's mixing with tears. Listen to Jen. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Go to Jen. Go upstairs. Look around. Why is that flickering? Oh, that's unpleasant. <gasps> that's the face! That's Jen! Oh my god! Go upstairs. I'm sorry, I don't understand. We tried our best, Mrs. Asian, but her injuries were too severe. No, I don't understand. I was just talking to her. I'm afraid Jennifer passed away before we could get to her in surgery. We did the best we could. I am so sorry. Where is she? Let me see her. Please, Mrs. Asian, take a seat. I don't want to take a seat. She was in the Let car. Now. I'll arrange for you to see her. In the meantime, James is in recovery. He's stable for now. I don't want to see him.
While searching your mind, your sister interrupts. She waves her hand in front of you and asks you if you can drive her home. Do you still feel sort of out of sorts? Uh, no. I'm sorry. I can't drive. I'm going to try one more no, but I've got a feeling yes is the answer here. No. Um, I am drunk. Yes. Hmm. Look around. Doors to the kitchen and living room lead from here while stairs take can take you up. Go upstairs. He'd love to call it a night, but Jen is waiting patiently. Agree. Leave room. You need to tell me which room you want to go to. Go to living room. You're sure your keys are in the living room? The living room has a much more relaxed atmosphere compared to the kitchen. Various guests are sat on chairs having civilized conversations. There's a coffee table in the middle of the room. Your mum is pouring a drink in the drinks cabinet. I really don't want to drive. Get keys. Pick up keys. Okay, look around. A coffee table, a drinks cabinet, one of the chairs is overflowing with jackets and coats. Look at jackets. You search through all the jackets and coats until you find yours. Aha! Car keys in the pocket. You grab both. I'd just like to say, I do not condone drink driving. No one should condone drink driving because as this shows, we gon' die. We'll get very hurt. Go outside. <clears throat> you open the front door. The cold air hits you. You are glad you have your jacket with you. There is a dusting of snow around you as you step down from the porch. The yard extends around the back of the house and the car sits in front of the house. Go to car. You fumble with the car handle confused until Jen tells you to maybe use the keys in your hand. See, a sign that I am clearly, I'm too drunk to drive. Um, use keys. Fumbling with the car keys, you eventually get the door open and climb inside. The car is freezing. As you fumble around with your seatbelt, your sister opens up the car gloves box, hands you a note and key that was inside. She tells you that it's for when you return. Read note. The note is from your dad and reads, Hi son, hope you enjoy your break. You'll need to fire up the generator around back to get power. Oh. I've read that note before. Turn heating on, because you don't want the windows to go funny. <sighs> Drive car. The car doesn't move, given that the engine isn't actually on. It's like you've never driven before. I don't know, I'm drunk. Turn car on. Try to turn the ignition with sheer willpower. Ah! Use key. Takes a number of attempts, but you eventually slot the key into the ignition. Turn car on. You turn the key in the ignition and the car roars to life. Turn on heating. Drive. The car squeals but stays stationary. Are you seriously going to make me do all this? Okay. Release hand brake. Very hesitantly release the hand brake. Drive. Put into gear. I'm assuming it's a manual. No. Uh, drive. Put the car in gear and pull out of the driveway like a first time driver. You really shouldn't be driving. You, I, am driving, very drunk, on the road towards a town where your sister stays. Jen started dozing off as soon as the journey got going. This shouldn't take long. You come to a junction. Is it left or right? You can't remember. Look around. 
The road goes off to the left and the right. You can't remember which way to go. The roads are quiet, always. Um, go right. You don't want to, but you better ask Jen for directions. Wake Jen. Wake up Jen. Ask. She's asleep though. Jen. She grunts and throws her arm to the left. It's left. Of course it's left. Left. Drive left. You turn the car left at the junction and accelerate off. Confidently that you're on the right road now, you loosen up and put your foot down on the accelerator. You feel powerful as the engine rolls at your command. Jen sits up in her chair and clutches her arm. She asks you to slow down. Slow down. Call with me. That's not what really happened though, is it? You're all over the place, James. Pull over. Jen is hitting your arm and yelling at you, crazy sister. Strange, there is a set of headlights coming directly at you, but really slow, like in slow motion. Change lane. You try to react, but your body isn't responding. There's not there's nothing you can do to stop this. There's no way to control it. The lights merge with your car. Outside joins inside. The whole world around you begins to scream. wake up in the car. Your world is upside down. Your seatbelt struggles against gravity trying to hold you in as you seal. The impact onto another car has torn a hole into the chassis. Poisonous fumes spilling into your car from the engine. In grave danger, you have to get out of here. Undo seatbelt. Undo seatbelt. Release seat belt. I want to acknowledge that I did try to do this already. You release yourself from the seat. Gravity takes over as you slump on the roof of the car. Undo Jennifer seat belt. Leave wreckage. You squeeze through the wreckage and fall on your hands and knees on the ground next to the vehicle. Every breath brings pain to your chest. Your head is throbbing. The blue car has smashed into the passenger side of your car. Your life cannot be ruined by this. You are standing holding your, your dad's note and flashing. Something is approaching you at a distance. Run. Leave. Look around. A crash site. Smoke billows from the crashed cars in the sky above. Exterior lights flickering on and off. Whoops. Hide. Whiskey. Well, that's not smart thinking, James, is it? They will eventually find it there and they will link it to you. Um, okay, um... What else is there left to interact with? Look at blue car. The hazard lights are blinking and something rising in the windows. You can see a motionless driver. What's happening? Move to driver. Walk to blue car. This really isn't a logical link. With the lights approaching closer, you begin to hear the shrill of their sirens. You simply cannot go to jail. This, you clean the bottle and remove your connection with the whiskey, and then deliberately spill the remainder of the bottle's contents on the driver as you toss the incriminating evidence onto the passenger seat. circle of flashing lights around you. 
illuminating the crash light into the darkness behind you. An army of people all staring. One figure steps out, a silhouette, and walks towards you. Approach... Oh god. O-A-C-H. Approach... Figure. As you approach, the man... The pulsating lights around you get dimmer and dimmer while the pain in your head increases. I know you're tearing yourself apart over it, but no matter what you keep telling yourself, you have to listen to me. That accident... Me. You have to remember. It was all your fault. Yeah, I know. I know what you did. How you left me there to protect yourself. Planting evidence on some poor man. You went headfirst into that office and you wrecked all of our lives. And then you couldn't even take responsibility. You did the right thing for you and no one else. Save yourself. Only it was wrong, wasn't it? Look at you now. Utterly consumed by it. Say it, James. Say it. Tell them. Listen to yourself. It has to end, James. I'm confused and it's dark. Do you not understand? I do. This episode you're having must come to an end. I know. It's my fault. Make it stop, make it stop. Do you remember? Sometimes they stop make you the watch the past stage. sessions. I think we've made progress today, Mr. Asian. I guess we should tell the police what you've told us. Although I don't suspect they'll take you anywhere. I think you'll be with us for quite some time. Come on, let's get you back to your shows. I'll see you tomorrow. Guess who's crazy? This guy. So, that was the final episode of Stories Untold, and I really loved the way that they tied everything in together towards the end and made it all make sense. I really enjoyed that. Um, there are a few points I felt that the story was really slowed down by like fiddly things or slightly wrong language, so it didn't work, but that's really minor in terms of the whole thing. I'm glad I stuck it through the third episode to get to this last one. Yeah, I would definitely recommend playing this for yourself. It's incredibly atmospheric, very well done. It's, it's the good kind of horror that sort of messes with your brain without actually doing anything to you. And I liked it. Well done, the many, many people who made this. And for like, I think this was about £6 on Steam, maybe? Or was it Itchio? Either way, that's a really good price for the amount of gameplay I'd say I've had on this, because... I was thinking about it even when I wasn't playing it, so... And then discussing it with some of my colleagues, and... I... I would recommend playing this. <sighs> so
so I hope you have a very lovely day and most importantly of all you do you